Now we're looking at the third set, which is Iron Gate, Porta di Vero Stretta. Um, this is going to be probably the most, not most complex, but the first section is, it has the most options available to us because of a lot of ways that the initial defense can, can go. Right? So whether it's a great beat or it's a bind. Uh, but once we get past that, the Sword and Cloak and Sword and Dagger Sword and Dagger Sword and Cloak section is actually quite short much shorter than other sections, uh, which I find quite interesting, given how complex the first part of the scar is. Uh, so in any case, we have our very first defense against a Mandrito, Tanete Squalingo Tongo. Some of these will work a little better against others, um, especially since they're coming from the so-called wrong side. If they give a diagonal or some cut, I'm almost always going to have to transition to a headguard position and cut on the other side. In any case, so here we are, a Mandrito comes in, we make contact. Depending how good that contact is, how well they beat their sword, I could, in theory, if I get a really nice one, beat, step forward the left foot, have it follow, and slice to the face. More likely is a beat to make contact and cut to the head with a reverso, ending up in this Kurumunga Alta position. If, however, we make contact and we are found, I could turn my hand upwards and thrust. If we're bound and they cross the line, I will yield and cut to the other side. So, beat. Yield, cut, and cut. So very similar to what we looked at in Kurimuka Strata. We can also use the Mezzo Reverso. This is the number four cut. This is really only going to work against the Mandrito Fendente for the Mandrito because so too it's a little bit suicidal walking into a horizontal or diagonal attack. So against the Pendente, we can beat stepping to their right, and we can immediately turn that into either a Indocata via Redopio, or we can go right ahead and do two fours in a row, striking to the head. Finally, and probably the most useful thing to do here, is simply to use face guard and strike to the chest or face. If they go low instead, we can use the same idea. We're going to raise our sword. If we feel no contact, we remove the leg. They walk on four points. So that's it. When we have the dagger in hand, we have a total of two extra plays using the dagger to defend and avoiding the leg. So we are here. Mandrita comes in. Step in either a Punta Persa turning into a ton, uh, Universo Tondo, a Madrito to the leg, or a Stoccata to the chest. All three of those things are likely, can be done depending on how they are attacking. So the time, the first one shows is defend and cut. This could also be defend and cut from the right to the left, or defend and Stoccata. If instead they go for the low line, we will raise our sword to Facha and step back, or we will raise our sword to Facha and cut the hand. Of course, we could simply just, uh, with the sword in one hand, we could also just use Facha, but it doesn't specifically say we can, but it's there. So, we only have three options here, not a lot, but we will do the cloak defense again in almost exactly the same way, and that we are stepping strongly to their right while hitting them with a punta versa, cutting. This could also be a mandrito to the leg, or it could be a stoccata of the center. And alternatively, we could use the 
and stand by. Fat shot. Which is always going to work. And for a reason, they went low, which is not really available here, but go for it anyway. We extend and let down and down themselves. So that's the Mandri's defenses. The reversal defenses get a little bit more, uh, a bit more meaty. There's more to do there. 